For our final topic, let's discuss what employers can actually do to boost hourly worker retention. Uh, we've talked about the schedule quite a bit, and so that's probably a good place to start. Why don't you kick it off by saying, you know, how does a company reconcile this process of balancing their needs and their employee needs? Well, I think you have to first start with what you can do as a business. You can't just start and say, hey, I'm going to do everything for everybody. What can the business actually handle? Um, if you're, we were working in, uh, in South America not too long ago, and there was no way to work 12-hour shifts because of the labor laws in that country. Don't offer 12-hour shifts, because as soon as you offer them and they don't work with the labor laws, you're going to create a problem. So understand what your ideas are. Don't talk about working Monday through Friday if you know the plant has to work seven days a week. Don't talk about a 10-hour shift if you can't make it fit. You know, those kind of things. Understand what actually can possibly work. Also understand that it's not just about what time people work, but also the little details, right, about absenteeism. Do you have the right absenteeism policy? Do you have the right points policy? Do you have the right retention policy? What are these different pieces you've got going in there? Understand all those. Then, once you understand what sort of the game field is, now it's time to engage the employees. And you want to hear what they have to say, right? If, and if you, if you don't have, if you can't provide specifics, then don't provide specifics, but just try and get them to give you some ideas. Some of the best solutions that we've seen developed were developed from a kernel that came from some shift worker in the back 40 of the, of the coal mine or something. You know, they have unbelievable things. People think about these ideas all the time. Most people, employees and managers, are kind of caught inside the trees, but, you know, those ideas, at least those ideas, something that maybe got them thinking, that can be the start to get them outside the trees. Ron, from a technology perspective, what we find some of our customers are looking at is getting creative with just how they go about scheduling to kind of strike that, that balance between their needs and their employee needs. For example, in many industries, the whole notion of, of letting employees choose shifts would be like considered impossible, right? Uh, but it's actually not, right? If you, if you kind of challenge that core assumption, there's actually a lot of ways to be able to provide open shifts and let employees essentially pick their own shifts. Um, and it's being tried in industries that you'd be very surprised about that are very traditional in terms of typically a top-down kind of scheduling notion. So in addition to kind of a bottoms-up scheduling standpoint, um, the whole aspect of shift trading. And shift trading has been going on as long as there's probably been shifts, right? Yep. People have been saying, hey, you know, Frank, can you take my shift? I'll take your, your shift next week. But it's not necessarily very scalable, and it's also, for certain employees, not a very, a very flexible option. So, you know, being able to put in a formal shift trading, uh, you know, ability and workflow for, for employees to be able to post shifts and uh, have other employees pick them up is a great way to help employees out in terms of uh, uh, flexibility. And lastly, I mean, I think one of the other kind of most uh, intriguing kind of areas where companies can look at is the whole notion of looking at strategies like voluntary overtime. Um, instead of a required overtime type of policy where everybody has to share in the overtime, uh, why not consider letting the people who actually want to work the overtime work the overtime? Uh, we have a customer that actually struggled with uh, mandatory overtime. Uh, they, that's how they approach their overtime uh, practices. Um, and then they, they decided to get a little more innovative and they went to a completely volunteer overtime that you just sign up if you want overtime. Uh, and, and the results were great. They actually increased the fill rate of overtime shifts to almost 100% all, every single week. And the employees that wanted the hours got the hours. So that was a great example of a win-win where, where the company got overtime filled and employees who wanted to work them uh, made it work. Sure. And every, every company has individual, depending where you're at, from an overtime perspective, they can make sense. Might not make sense for everybody. There are some companies where i got to get the work done, so doing all volunteer might not work, right? So it depends on where, you're, where your industry is, but certainly adjusting those little rules matter. And I would say, uh, you know, we talk about the trees and the forest. You need to get outside the forest, or outside the trees and, and look at the forest. If you're, if you're uh, working in a manufacturing plant here locally in Seattle, Maybe it's time to go over to a warehouse. Wait a second, I don't have a paper bill. Go, go to Amazon and see what they're doing. Right. If you're in Amazon, don't look at Amazon. Don't look at warehouses. It's time to go to the local mine and see what they're doing because they have ideas. They do things differently. Let's get outside the box. Maybe I think we can't do uh, voluntary overtime, but maybe the answer is I can Right? And overtime is a great one. The right schedule allows you to do that. It's not just the tools, but it's also do you have holes where you can work? Because remember back to that, that company that was working every week and overtime on the weekends, guess what? On Saturday, I can't take your overtime because you're here too. Right. But if we have ways in which we build in holes where maybe 
I'm off and now you can fill in or you're off when there's an overtime thing and so now you can get more and if you get more and I get less then I'm happy you're happy because we do know in most workforces they're the overtime hogs and the people who don't want it and that's no negative on anybody just the way they are right, right? and let's go ahead and allow that kind of uh, you know the preferences to bubble up and certainly technology can take advantage of not just what people's preferences are at a certain point when they sign up or they start the schedule or once a year but if I have the ability to adjust my preferences Maybe I didn't want any overtime, but boy, I just my wife just had a baby, and we need extra cash, and you know I'm in for the over. I'll take everything you got. Everything you can get. Right? Where in the old days you'd go talk to your supervisor to kind of get a little bit extra over to get my name to the head of the list. In a company of a thousand people with moving parts as fast as they are and supervisors moving around, you can't do. You know, word of mouth only goes so far. Right. right? And technology unlocks that word of mouth. Right. Piece. Well, one, one other area beyond overtime that certainly is a strategy uh, around scheduling we've seen employees or employers go after is the whole notion of, of using scheduling to build a more flexible workforce. So, you know, the, the, the chicken uh, processing plant that you had mentioned, you know, we have a similar client in, in, a, in a similar space that uh, really was challenged with being able to reach their production capacity and they actually used scheduling to their advantage. They started uh, creating much shorter shifts, like little blocks, like two, three hour shifts. Uh, and they were able to tap workers in their community that they would not have been able to attract um, as employees if they did not have those kind of flexible scheduling practices. So, you know, overtime's a, a very uh, easy one that every company addresses. But for those companies who are really looking at just finding workers, um, they need to think about scheduling a little bit more dynamically. Yeah, and that's a great outside the box uh, example out there. To take that uh, chicken processing is, is great. You need the tools out there to do that, but certainly, wow, that has implications across the board. Again, Not for everybody. Right. And for any manufacturing guy listening to this or gal listening to this, they're probably going, wait a second, it would never work. But really, if you could find employees where we've seen that happen, how about retirees, right? Where I don't want to work a full time job, I'm retired, but I'll come in during the peak season for a couple hours a week, or especially if I can sign up for the shift. There's obviously a lot of complexity in that. Sure. But if we can solve that problem, we can meet the company demand, and we can make employees happier because if you're coming in and covering four hours for me as a retiree, it's four hours that I don't have to, maybe during the summer, I don't have to work those four hours on Saturday. I get time with my kids. I'm happier. Good point. Right. Yeah. So can you employ these strategies without technology? Well, you know, one of the problems with uh, employing without technology is you can solve a problem today. So I've been a consultant for a long time. And I can tell you, we can solve scheduling problems perfectly as well as any piece of software. But it'll take us a couple weeks, and we've solved the problem today, but that problem is old in an hour from it's now. It's dated. Yeah. It's dated because things continue to move. People's preferences change, the business changes. So what we find is... When we put in a solution, really having a technology will lock in that solution long term. Because you think about, you know, management preferences change, time changes, a solution that you have today, you know, we, and we have clients working the same schedules that we put in in the 90s or even in the 80s. Um, that's a long time. But think most companies, things do change, and you need to have the flexibility to change that, and you need to have something intelligent. And that's where the software with the right parameters in it uh, really, really makes a difference. And then on top of that, there are some solutions that would be probably impossible. You mentioned the, uh, the chicken plant with the four hours. That's, that is a great solution. Uh, it has uh, some rules that you could really be careful, but if you get the right rules, great solution from an employee to business perspective. But if you don't have the technology to manage that, could you imagine being the scheduler trying to do that in Excel right. on paper? There's just no way. Right? right? There are companies out there that are still using whiteboards, right? Uh, could you imagine trying to do that on a whiteboard? There's just no way. And if your plant's two or 300 people, so you certainly, technology, one, gives you the long-term stick of this change that you're going to get all the benefit from. And the second one, it allows you to do even more things that you couldn't do, no matter how interested you are in getting outside the box, but if you don't have the technology to support that, so. Yeah, no, great answers. You know, I think the, um, the, just kind of finishing up on that thought is, is it's, it's, you're able to do it at small scale and you're able to do it at a point in time, um, but as you start growing and you start having workers in the hundreds or, yep. or even thousands, um, it's just it's beyond the scope of being able to understand employee preferences, especially as employee preferences change week to week and, uh, and month to month. Absolutely.